Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. I'm going to need to go ahead and give you the disclaimer before we start the service. Um, The reason why is because we're going to be talking about marriage and divorce. And um, there's probably many of you that have grown up as a divorced child, you know, having your parents divorce and you grew up in that, or you may have, um, you may be someone who has divorced. And so when, when we get into this subject, people can take it, can be very offended you know, um, and, and I want you to understand, like, what we look at biblically when, get, when it says God hates divorce, he says that two places in Scripture, one is adultery, the other is abandonment. Right? That's the reasons for divorce. Um, unfortunately, as we see throughout the Bible, they, they misuse divorce uh, whenever they just something wasn't cooked right or they didn't do this for me then they divorced and remarried Uh, jesus had to deal with that and talk about that himself but at the same time when we talk about um, divorce and marriage one of the things that's not covered and and i want to make sure y'all understand how this works for the church so abandonment and adultery what about abuse physical abuse very simply is this The first thing I'm going to have you do is call law enforcement. The police need to be involved. The next thing I'm going to ask you to do is separation. You do not need to be in the house with somebody who's abused you. You need counseling. Christian counseling. And if the kids have witnessed or seen it, they are going to need Christian counseling. Now, the abuser, if he gets help... Or she gets help because sometimes the women can pull the firing pan out and lay some, lay some, uh, some iron down. It happens. Or throw hot grits on somebody. I've known that. Um, if that person gets Christian counseling and then if the person that was abused decides they want to try to give it a go, then they need to go into counseling together. Okay? Now... Through all of that, that's how we handle it. You may not agree with it, but at the end of the day, my job is to protect the person being abused and the children. I don't really care what you think because I'm the one who will have to answer to God, not you. And I'm not going to send somebody back into a, a, a place where they're being abused physically. So just understand that. Now, I am going to be talking about my marriage. So when I talk about my marriage, the 22 years of it that I'm going to speak of is two unbelievers bringing in all of their baggage. Now, trust me, you know, Teresa had very little. I had a ton of baggage that I brought. I brought a lot of it in and brought it into our marriage. And so when I talk about those things, understand it was 22 years of not walking with God. But we were still under a covenant with God. We got married in a church. Played the role, right? Even had Ephesians chapter, I I was telling my wife, I think I remember him saying, love is patient, love is kind. I blew that one week one. 
So when I talk about marriage, it's, I hold it very dear. And, and so if, if I, you know, again, I, I want to make sure you all understand, we're dealing with a few things in this Scripture. Uh, the main things that we're dealing with is first, he's going to talk about how we treat each other as believers. And the word you're going to see used over and over is treacherously or deceitful. Deceitful. That's how they were treating each other. Deceitfully or treacherously. And then we'll look at the second, which is marrying foreign women. And, you know, when we look at that, we're, the reason why is because it was bringing in false gods. And they were bringing in worship that went against God. But we look at it as marrying an unbeliever. Marrying an unbeliever. And then we will look at marriage. The covenant of marriage. So we have a lot to cover today. I simply entitled this in Malachi chapter 2 verses uh, 10 through 16. Detestable, deceitful sins of Israel. Because now he's moving away from the priest, the Levitical priest, to the people. Okay? He's going to the people now. We'll look at it in verse 10, uh, dealing deceitfully with one another. In verses 11 and 12, dealing deceitfully with marriage to unbelievers. And then verses 13 through 16, dealing deceitfully with divorce. So let's pray and we'll go ahead and get right into this. Father God, we thank you so much for today. We do pray and we ask, Lord, that you be with us this week as we come together with family. Uh, we ask that you would um, strengthen the marriages within this church, Lord. Um, I, I pray... Um, that you would work within the families and, and in this community. But Lord, we come before you. We, we ask that we come with open hearts, ready to receive your word. Seek application. Um, I'm sure some of y'all thought we were coming in for a Thanksgiving. Like I thought I was going to have a Thanksgiving teaching. And be all happy. That's not what we do here. We teach the word of God here. We go verse by verse, chapter by chapter, so we don't get to skip these things. Um, and that's the purpose. It's because we have to learn God's Word. We don't need just to, to know it as head knowledge, but heart knowledge that we actually apply it. Let us learn to love one another. We're going to learn about the different ways that that's given, whether it's through grace, through the knowledge of the Word of God, and the way we bear with one another. Let us do that as a church. Let us practice that as uh, followers of Christ. We thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So we, we get the gist of what was going on. So we have, first he's going to talk about, uh, he talked about the Levitical priests last week. They, they didn't know the Word of God. That was their job. And because they didn't know the Word of God and they allowed sloppy worship, right, and what it ends up allowing to happen in the nation of Israel is sloppy morality. Sloppy morality. Uh, same problem we have in our country today. Very, very similar. We have sloppy worship, which leads to sloppy morality. Now, all of us know, like our nation is spiraling out of control. You don't, it doesn't matter what party you want to be a part of or what thing that you want to try to, what side of the argument you want to be. If you ask anyone, how's our country? And everybody will tell you, it's not looking good. And as Christians, one of the things that we have to do is to remember the worship that we have and the way that we glorify God is known through the knowledge of the Word of God and the application of it. And just like the priest, we talked about you're a royal priesthood. That's your job as, as followers of Christ. To be the light. Some of you are going to be with family members you absolutely cannot stand. And if, you, if you're thinking, Mike, man, come on. I, I got a couple. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sitting up here like I don't have any. So when you come to uh, the parking lot, Kevin's going to be handing me a shotgun. I have a young man coming over to court my daughter this Thanksgiving. So, you know, hey. 
It's it is what it is, man. I you know, but first thing I asked was, is he a believer? And she's like, yes. I said, okay, we got check one done. Now I just got to clean the gun in front of him, and we can good. And all you dads that have daughters, you understand. It's our jobs to protect them. The boys were just like, go ahead, man. You go do your thing, which is a mess. We need to have the same same diligence on the boys as well. But what we see is we see a society that has allowed sin to be glorified, whether it's sexual sin. We, we have political parties that are being worshipped. Worshipped. Seriously. And, and we see things that are going on in our, in our cities where they're hate crimes. And nothing's being done. And what we see is the church has adapted a lot of these same things within the church. There are a lot of churches that have gone along with these, even though it goes against the Word of God. And as we head into verse 10, he's going to deal now with the nation of Israel. In verse 10, as we look at dealing deceitfully with one another, have we not all one Father? Have not one God created us? Now, very simply, uh, you could argue the point that Abraham is the father and a Adam is the father of all, but the only person who gets to call God the father is somebody who's a child of God. Right? God creates everything. And that's why Malachi follows it up with that next question. Has not one God created us? Has not one God created us? We are created by God. And through, the, through creation, uh, man was created. Adam, unfortunately, lost that relationship with God because of his sin. And we were born with that sin nature. We have a fallen nature. The nation of Israel comes from, uh, from Adam and from Abram. Abraham, we learned that this past week. But one of the things he's talking about here as he deals with this is he's trying to get them to understand in that next statement is why do we deal treacherously with one another by profaning the covenant of the fathers? Now the covenants that he's speaking of are two covenants that, that are here, which is the Abrahamic covenant, which goes back to Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you're, you shall be a blessing and I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And then you have the Mosaic Covenant which was given by Moses with the, the law. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 6, And you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. And as we look at these two covenants, the uh, Abrahamic covenant and the Mosaic covenant, we know that the Mosaic covenant is filled and completed by Jesus Christ because He kept the law. He's the only one who can and only one who did. You can't keep the law. But the law is there to help guide you. Why? It helped guides us to be more like Christ. You're going to fail to keep it, but He wants you to, 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 try to, 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 to try to follow it. But we understand what I think what messes a lot of people up is they don't understand that the Mosaic Law is the exact way that our laws are governed in this world. Almost every nation... Every society has these laws. If you murder somebody, what happens? You face a trial. In most countries, they just murder you. You're stoned to death. And that's based on, you look at, don't, thou shalt not murder. What happens if you steal? In most countries, you go to trial. In some countries, they cut your hands off. You ain't going to steal no more. But these are the Mosaic laws, and, and, and God has given us. I remember I told you all that you have the government for the unbelieving world. You have the government that is supposed to be the authority to handle these things, right? The laws for its 
community, for a society. And then you have the police and the DAs, which are supposed to implement the laws. And then you have the parents. And what happens when all of these fail? You have a society that's out of control. And that is what's going on today with America. The DAs don't want to prosecute anybody. They treat the criminals like the person that's been hurt by the, uh, by the thief or by the person being mugged. They give, the, they give more respect to the mugger than they do the person that was mugged. We've completely flipped this upside down. I, you know, you think about all of the, the just uh, the corrupt politicians that we have now in the government. When they're supposed to be looking out for your vested interest, they're not. Unfortunately, they're not. I mean, you have taxpayers, uh, I mean, realistically, how many of us, you, you see what's happening in San Francisco, but all of a sudden you can clean it up in a week? Because a, a president's coming in who believes, they don't even believe in God. We're, we're corrupt. And our parents have checked out. Why? Why have our parents checked out? Don't make the mistake that every other parent does and, and, and what they do is they hand a child a device. These kids are getting addicted to pornography at age six. Age six. If you look and allow your children to watch YouTube, there are things that appear on that thing in the children's shows, in, in the little feeds you have to pay attention to. But the parents have checked out. They've allowed our, this generation that we see that are pro-Palestinian, that are adopting the letter to America of Osama bin Laden. What is wrong with us? What, where are the parents? See, the Mosaic Law is for us as believers, like for us to guide us to be more like Christ. You can't be Christ, but you are to be more like Christ, to practice righteousness, to practice holiness. But you're supposed to teach that to your kids. You're not supposed to just hand them a device and say, hey, go be an influencer. Go do what you want. Why would a child talk about suicide at age 7 or 8 years old? Because they're learning it on TikTok because that's what China is putting in the thing. They're teaching these kids how to commit suicide. But you're just going to pass that device off and not even monitor what they're looking at. And so when we see these things, we have, like God is trying to help you. But you have to, it, it requires you to actually be a follower of Christ. To actually put into practice. Don't become the nation of Israel. This, when we look at Malachi, this is America. It's America. And, and it's sad to see. But one thing that I always point you to and always uh, try to remind you is that, that we are God's children. Those that have chosen to follow Him. But the ones who haven't are still created in the image of God. They still need Jesus. And that's why he says you're profaning, you're, you're, you're dealing treacherously with one another. He gives us some of that in, in Leviticus chapter 19, verses 13 through 18. He says simply, you shall not cheat your neighbor, nor rob him. The wages of him who is hired shall not remain with you all. Uh, night until morning, you shall not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shall fear God, I am the Lord. You shall do uh, no injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. In the righteousness, you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go about a talebearer among your people, nor shall you take a stand against the life of your neighbor. 
I am the Lord. You shall not hate your brother in your heart. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor and not bear sin because of him. You shall not take vent, man. You shall surely rebuke your neighbor. If somebody's doing something that goes against God, hello, rebuke. That should be a song. Hello, rebuke. Hey, what you're doing goes against God's word. I love you enough to tell you that. We won't do that. What are they going to think of me? Oh, they may know I'm a Christian. You shall take vengeance, nor bear any. You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people. Lord, forgive me. But you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. And so what's happened here is because of what the priest has allowed, unity and, and the society has fractured. There's division. And can I tell you, the devil works. He loves division. Anywhere he can create division, that's where he's at work. And, and we have to ask ourselves that question. If we have sloppy worship from pastors, from, uh, from the congregation, do you not think that the devil did a job on us during 2022 and 2021? He's created division in the church. Unity was fractured in the church. A lot of people were exposed as just being somebody who just attended a building and never had real faith in Christ. And that's what he's saying. He's like, when we have this disunity, because of what the priest has done, they haven't guided you with God's Word. If I don't guide you with God's Word, y'all need to get rid of me. Somebody needs to grab me by my ear and walk me out the door. Remember when Wyatt Earp, Kirk Russell, when he grabbed Billy Bob Thornton, he yanked him out of the... and he kicked him out? And all the guys on, who have seen Tombstone knows that scene. Y'all walk me right up out of here. It's my job to give you the Word of God. And it's my job to make sure that we stay in unity with each other. But it's also your job to make sure as pastors of your home to keep unity within your family. And unity in your community. And unity at the school. And we don't want to do that. But... What if you're here and you're going, well, Mike, last week you told me I was a royal priesthood. I'm not a Jew. This has to do with the Jewish nation. Well, guess what? Romans chapter 11, verses 16 and 17. <laughs> For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches are broken off, and you being a wild olive tree, that's you, were grafted in among them. Now, if you want to read more about that, you can read Romans chapter 11, and it'll tell you. But you have been grafted in. So guess what? This is for you as well. You can't get out of it again this week. It's, it's important for us to understand. Like One of the things that we, we see is that Jesus gives us the blueprint for our lives, which is the... The first and great commandment, which is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. In Matthew chapter 22, verses 37. And then verse 39, and the second is like that. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so what we're given is in the New Testament, you're given a bunch of what we call one another scriptures. One another scriptures, and, and those are, are simply, you know, uh, to teach us how we are to treat each other as followers of Christ. Right? And, and the, the, the beauty of these one another scriptures is they're, they're based on really three things. Unity, love, and humility. Unity, love, and humility. One of the first ones we see is how to show love to each other. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15, always seek to do good to one another. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, 10, 
As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We are to bear with one another, but we are to have grace for one another. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2, bear with one another in love. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. There's a great, um, I forget the name, the guy's name, Sean. What's the guy's name? Sean. Victor Marks. There's an interview that Victor Marks did. It's a three-parter. You, Sean, Sean Ryan. Thank you. I knew somebody would know. Victor Marks is actually one of the Calvary Chapel guys. He actually has rescued kids during uh, ISIS that were being uh, trafficked. Um, he's done a number of things. Uh, but unfortunately, his, his childhood is really sad. He was tortured as a child, physically abused, sexually abused and physically abused. And I would tell you, I'm not going to go into all of it because I don't want to ruin your Sundays because it's a hard watch. It's a very hard watch. But the beauty, like I, I don't even know, even as I watch it, understand it. It's only by God that you can forgive the person who sexually abused you and bring them to Christ. Like, I, I still can't wrap my head around that. It's not for everybody. I can tell you that. Sometimes forgiveness is just giving that person up over to God and letting go of it. And you never have contact with that person. That's fine. But man, I, that's a, it's a great watch. It's a three-parter. The victim marks, I would, you know, there's some, there's some, um, he's a Marine, so just FYI. So, he took all that anger and he used it in combat. And, and so, uh, yeah, but definitely worth one to go check out. Uh, and then we also speak words to one another that are, are that, that build up. And Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom. 1 Thessalonians 5, 11, Encourage one another to build one another up. And Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13, Exhort one another every day. And then we are to welcome one another. Hospitality, Romans chapter 12, verse 16, Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. In verse Romans 15, verse 7, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 9, show hospitality to one another without grumbling. And we are to have the same mind as one another. Do, not, uh, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count one another more significant than yourself. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. And then First uh, Peter 5, 5, clothe yourself, all of you, with humility towards one another. And then finally, the one that some of you may have to practice this, this Thursday. Ephesians chapter 4, verses uh, 1 through 3, Therefore I, 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 the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility, and gentleness with patience, showing tolerance for one another in love. Showing tolerance. You know, that's, that, again, that I've had people that have hurt me very deeply in church. And that's a real thing. Okay? I had somebody put, put their hands on my child. Grabbed my child because he had his foot on the wall. And brought him to my wife. And my wife was, I, that face when she says, let's go. It's okay. That's it. There's no more. Let's, we're leaving right now. Um, but over time, it's like I, you know, I love that brother. I wish him all the best. Am I going to go to dinner with him? No. I tolerate him. When I see him at events, we, we've, man, it's amazing what God has done and softened his heart over the years. Um, but again, you, 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 there are certain brothers and sisters in Christ you, 
I love you. Am I going to lunch with you? God bless you. I love you. I wish all the best for you and your family, y'all's business. I'll pray for you. I love you. That's as much as I can do. And I love the humanity of the Bible because it's like you tolerate. Because there are going to be people that do get up under your skin, even in the church. Even in the church. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us to find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio, pretty much wherever you can find a podcast. Uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 